Hey everyone, Matt here on another edition of Ask Ron. Ron, how are you doing today? Couldn't be better. Nice, that's what I like to hear. All right, we have about eight or so questions today, so let's go ahead and get started. The first one we have is from Steven in California. Steven says, Ron, can a builder lease option the new house under Dodd-Frank? I know they can't sell their finance. Well, now that you ask that, Dodd-Frank has a specific clause in there about builders and they can sell finance as long as they comply with Dodd-Frank, which isn't that big of a deal. And yes, of course, they can lease option any house they build. There's nothing in there in Dodd-Frank about lease option. Nice. That answers Stephen's question. All right, moving on to Fernando in Florida. He has two questions. Here's his first one. I hear that credit unions are good banks that are willing to sell directly to an investor. Is this true? I don't know. I haven't bought a house from a credit union and since I can remember. <laughs> All right. And then his next question is, when we do a cash deal, do we normally want to double close? Not if you can help it. You prefer a simultaneous close. But that means uh, one set of closing costs and they go from, that, that's between the seller and the buyer and then you just get a check. That's where you just assign your contract. If you have to double close, then somebody's got to pay those extra closing costs, one to buy and one to sell, even if they're 20 minutes apart. Got it. So try to avoid double closing if you can. All right, the next question we have is from Stanley in Michigan. Stanley says, if purchased Purchasing the land trust versus the property, are you still eligible for the depreciation of the property? Anytime you purchase the property in a land trust, it has absolutely nothing to do with your income tax consequences. It's in the IRS code, it's a see-through entity. Uh, let me go back to that last question a minute, Matt. Um, I don't know what state he was in, but uh, sure. I know, for example, in Illinois, they have a rule against assigning contracts right now. You actually have to own it to resell it or have a real estate license. So yeah, if you think you have to do double closings, find out from an attorney why that it would be required. For example, in Illinois, if I didn't have a license and I wanted to sign a contract, I'd have to double close. I'd have to buy it and then resell it. Um, and sometimes that can be done with the buyer's money and in some states it can't. So you'll have to check that out on your own. Got it. By the way, People are selling houses all over the country from one particular one, one location. You don't even have to be in the state where the house is that you're wholesaling. <laughs> That's right. All right, our next question is from Woodrow in Maryland. Woodrow says, what happens to my deal if I do a lease option or subject to with the seller and they file for bankruptcy? All right, if you do a subject to with the seller, you already own the property. And if they file for bankruptcy, they probably will name that, uh, that loan, but it does not affect your rights. Now, it doesn't really matter in your case unless you've got a tenant buyer about ready to cash you out because you just ride it out. Uh, they will not, you know, I'm, I'm gonna say they will not. Uh, okay, if, if uh, you do get a notice of bankruptcy, you need to get with your attorney and figure out what to do next, but they have no interest in that property anymore because even if they, tried to overturn that sale. There's no money in it. The seller got no money. So they have no reason to overturn the sale. And they would simply be hurting the creditor and not helping them. And they're supposed to be helping the creditors. Uh, if in fact, you got a cash buyer during the bankruptcy, then you can petition the court and ask them to release it because you're about to pay off that creditor, which is what that bankruptcy is all about. So uh, don't worry about all of that nonsense. Same thing is true with a lease option. If you have a lease with an option to buy, you have an equitable interest in the property and you have legal rights. So when that happens, see your attorney, but you're not out. All right. And then I think we have the last set of questions from Mary Ann Nunez in California. Good old Mary Ann. <laughs> Mary Ann, I missed you. <laughs> All right. Her first question out of three is, Ron, I think you mentioned that when you buy with owner finance and you don't stay on the contract to the seller, that the first 30 days repair are covered by the seller. What if in the first 30 days, the tenant is installed the whole AC system and it stops working? Would I have to pay for it? 
Well, first of all, that 30 days only applies on a lease purchase. It does not apply when you buy the house. So if in fact the, the seller is warning the systems in that 30 days, they're only warning it for the first 30 that the tenant buyer is in the house. If the tenant buyer installs a central heat mayor, why would you think you're gonna have to pay for it? <laughs> they got it installed, well, they're gonna they're not gonna have to pay for it anyway. It should be under warranty. So I'm not sure uh, I understand that question beyond that answer. You're worried about the wrong things. <laughs> All right. The next one we have for Marianne is Ron. By any chance, do you know if in California, after a listing expires for the seller, would I still have to wait six months after listing expires before I can do a terms deal with a seller? Well, that depends, Marianne. In California or any other state, you're only obligated to, uh, work, uh, to the realtor. You're not obligated to the realtor at all. The seller is the one that's obligated to the realtor. So any claims between the realtor and the seller but it depends on whether the realtor procured you or not. If the realtor is not the one that introduced you to the property, they have no claim on, uh, on any kind of money after the listing has expired. If they did show you the property, then they do. And uh, I don't know whether it's six months or four months or whatever it is, that's based on the particular contract. Nice. All right, I think we have one more question. All right. Here it is. Marianne says, my VA received a call from a seller and he wanted to know how long will he have to wait to get paid off in full? She said, I can't answer anything about that and that she would have me call him back and discuss about the offer. But he said that if she can't answer him how long, then don't call back. What would be a better script to give my VA to use when a seller answers this way? Your VA shouldn't be asking that question to begin with. That's a question you talk about on the closing call or when you get to the house. That's mistake number one. Your VA is not trained to ask that question. You should not be letting them. And I don't know how you got off on that track. That is not in our script for our VAs to ask for that very reason, okay? You got to do the closing call and ask the terms questions. And when somebody says to me, how long will it be before I get paid off? My answer is, well, some people give us 30 years. Some people give us less. How long can you give me? And then whatever answer they say, uh, if it's if you like it, well, I can probably live with it. If you don't like it, wow, I haven't done one for less than 10 years for as long as I can remember. It's all in the scripts. You've got to learn the scripts. If you're trying to do this without getting the training. You've got a hard road to hoe. And if you uh, got the training and you need to come back, you know we let you come back to Quick Start for free for the first year. It's only 500 bucks for the well, every year thereafter. So uh, that is a very critical thing you missed right there, which will cost you deals. You got to get that script right and you got to get that call right. You master, you master that call. You've mastered 80% of the business right then and there. That's right. The golden scripts are key. Okay. All right. Is that it for today? I think that's all we got. That's all they got. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, guys, I'll see you next week. Go out and make something happen this week. See you then. All right. Thanks, guys. Uh, one more thing before we go, I suppose I don't have to tell you about our upcoming real estate summit. It's going to be a big one starting on the 14th. If you're not registered, it's free. It's free. So you better get registered right away because it's going to be a, a very unique one. We've never done this before where we have multiple speakers at one time. We're going to have several sessions of that. We're going to do a lot of deals. By the way, at our last boot camp, we did 28 deals for our students. Ooh. Okay. So we are really getting good at this. So um, you've got time to get some leads in and get them called and get in that pile and see if we can't get you deals before, uh, before it's over. And I'm gonna give away that brand new 1946 restored Ford custom coupe as well. It's a beauty, yeah. I'm sure you've seen pictures of it. And we're gonna have deal structuring. I mean, yeah, deal structuring every day. A live seller calls the first night. And we're going to have Jay and Carol Connor do a piano party one evening for you. They're going to play some oldies and you're going to get to name that tune. Yeah, it's going to be a blast. We're going to have a lot of fun. So go get registered for it right now. And, and uh, maybe you win that new car. All right. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>